Hello, Breakfast and Body Slams fans out there. But like I said, we're going to shorten it up to B&B Podcast since we're not having breakfast. And welcome to Thursday Night Slam. We have a great show for you tonight. We have uh, my fellow co-worker with me in Breakfast and Body Slams. None other than the man himself, Dennis Reaper. How you doing there, Chio? What's good, Dennis? How are you? What's up, buddy? Good. I'm drinking alcohol right now. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Uh, also, we'd like to welcome in the room none other than one of the better B- Bernards, and I don't mean Cheesecake <laughs> Chucky or that Frankie Frizzle guy, Mr. Mike Bernard. How you doing, hey. everyone? Hey! <laughs> now, now, How's it going, Chio? I'm good, I'm good. Now, gentlemen, I had a surprise for uh, Pat, but he decided he's going to do the fatherly thing to do and put the baby to bed. So we will see him here shortly. I had a nice surprise for him, but he's going to jump in here all day unless he's watching it on his phone or whatever. But uh, let me introduce to the wrestling world a young man, only three years younger than me, uh, who... Broke into the business quite late, I would say. Well, somewhat. But uh, he, he, he is retired. He is a former military veteran. So we must applaud him for that. That great 4th of July just ended. And, you know, and then we got uh, Labor Day coming up and Veterans Day and whatever other day, Memorial Day. Well, damn, this guy got a lot of holidays. But... <laughs> He's a former tag team partner of mine. And uh matter of fact, me and him together beat the living hell out of Frankie Frizzo. It's for real. <laughs> and this is T T Reyes. Hello, it's been a long, 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 long time coming, but uh I'm here now. And uh welcome, welcome. It's my first and hopefully not my last. And I thank you to my compadres all up on the mic. Let me holler at you. <laughs> so you was like 87 when I stepped into the ring at 23. So yeah, I, I, I was up there. I was up there in age. I already had gray on. So I don't even know what you're talking about. I was already old. So, uh, gentlemen, we have a bunch of show topics. Dennis, did you get the format? Uh, no, I did not. I was gonna say I was gonna say I was having pro- problems sending it out. Well, tonight's topics we will discuss the NXT Great American Bash. We will review that. I'm sure we all saw that. The oh yeah, the, pa- the passing of the late great Del Wilkes, aka the Patriot. We'll be discussing Terry Funk, WWE lawsuit, Jimmy Uso. There was a special visit by a certain person to the performance center. And then we're going to throw some freestyle discussion out there that some people might bring up to our attention. They have, these guys got notes written down there. Uh, we will get Not to me. it. Uh, Bob Harnett. I see him in the, in the room there giving us a shout out. Hey, <laughs> I, uh, like like I said, uh, Dave Adams was supposed to be here with us, uh, but I, I don't know where he's at. Uh, like I said, Pat's going to show up then. But you know what? Let's get my cheap plugs out the way. Let's plug Devereaux Sports, the all, all the Devereaux Sports shows going on at Last Out Media. You'll see the Gobbler Inc., the Sullivan Squad, Breakfast and Body Slams, and Devereaux Sports Plus. But Pat's not here. He should have the rundown because apparently there's a lot more other shows that's coming to Devereaux Sports. What that means is don't miss it. He's not here to give you the surprise. Holla. (laughs) Uh, Also, I want to give a shout out to our other podcast brothers out there. The guy, Anthony and Andy Header at Tornado Tag Podcast, as well as 
Sweet Tea referee Dave Keener and DB Richards over there at the 2300 Wrestling Podcast. And for all you young, inspiring uh, wrestlers out there, I suggest uh, check out TheWrestleLife.com, brought to you by Br Brutal Bob Evans. He has a lot of great stuff for you guys out there to pick up, harness, to harness, and uh, to move forward in the wrestling world. Another guy you guys got to check out, which uh, has some controversy stuff in the past, but I don't care. Uh, um, that that's to be talked about another time on maybe other shows and stuff, but I'm not going to get into that. But he has a lot of great uh, videos on his YouTube page, and that's Mike Quackenbush when he puts out his Till We Make It um, YouTubes. Check him out, especially the, the young guys from top to bottom. He schools you uh, like, like no other that I haven't heard before. Uh, but there's a, a lot of other greats out there like Cuball Carmichael, and the, the list goes on. It's long. It's long. So, before we jump into the NXT Great American Bash reviews and results, T. Reyes, what's up, brother? How's it going? Woo! It's been a long, long week of pro wrestling, baby. But uh, right now, we're bouncing back into what is full throttle as people coming back to the stands. Let me adjust your mic a little bit here. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. I'm, no, 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 that's right. Nobody ever gave me the yeah, mic in no, my professional right. career, so it's okay. Yeah, don't okay. drop it. Don't drop okay. it. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it was an excellent show to me. You, you watched the card top to bottom, Dave? Well, it, it was only four matches. <laughs> it was only four matches. <coughs> so, so you know what, guys? Let's uh, since he's bringing it up right away, let's let's jump right into it. The match number one, it was up. It was uh, MSK defending their NXT Tag Team Championships. Uh, Nash Carter and Wesley taking on Tomasa Champa and Toothless Timothy Thatcher. It's all right though. Nothing wrong being toothless. Fuck them hoes. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Uh, listen, that match was excellent to me. Uh, I think both teams went in and out. My only, only gripe would be the wrong team went over. I thought Dimity should have his due. You know, he's been put on a pedestal, but they didn't know what to do with him. Uh, being a guy as good as he is, they put him with Champa, who is amazing. So, like... Their, their skills is subpar, you know, like it, it's up there. And then you got MSK, who is a young upcoming team, which is not to say that I don't want them to lose. It's just I think it was their time and they could somehow get a rematch with the same team coming up in the next SummerSlam venues and things like that, that they're going to have the next takeover. What about you, Dave? Uh, it was very excellent, high impact. I agree with you right now. The wrong team, for me personally, the wrong team should have uh, should should have should have went over. Uh, I'm I, I'm thinking, I'm feeling. This is just me. I'm feeling. Uh, they're trying to pull Champa to the main roster, but we already discussed that. Uh, uh, he he definitely don't want to go. Dennis, you got any feedback on that? Um. First off, that match was pretty much amazing. I think that was the match of the night. Yes. Um, personally. Um, do I think the wrong team won? No. Um, because honestly, I don't think Ciampa and Thatcher need the tag titles to be where they are. I think Correct. they're. I think the reason they didn't win is because exactly what she said. I think they're trying to pull them, pull Ciampa up there, but I think they're going to pull him up there as a tag team because if you look at the tag team division on Raw and SmackDown, you physically and mentally have nobody like these two guys on the roster, period. Correct. So Correct. It, without them winning, and if they do win, it's going to be at a big takeover of an event when they're in an arena filled with 20,000 people. They're not going to do it, no offense, at the the Capitol Center wrestling, for whatever you want to call it these days. That wouldn't, in my opinion, look good. I think they needed, if they're going to have them win the titles, they're going to be at a bigger crowd. But I think it's because they're pulling them up and they're going to wait until it's the right time. Um, so do I think the wrong team won? No. I think it was the right decision to have MSK win. 
um, because those guys were killing it before they came over to the fe- over to WWE, and they're killing it now still with without one of their members. So, uh, Mike, you got any feedback for us? Yeah, uh, I agree with Dennis. Uh, I'm on the same boat. I think that the uh, right team did win. Uh, it was a great back and forth match. I loved it. Uh, I loved the little small package at the end. It reminded me of the classics. Uh, but yeah, I agree. It would probably be in the front of a big crowd. That's what I think they're waiting for is is the live audience to pull some really big stuff. Yeah, I love I love the hard hitting in there. The way they were just going back and forth and uh, and uh, uh, and and yo, MSK was holding her own against these two vets. And Thatcher is a vet right up there. Um, I don't believe he has much time in as, as Champa does, but he's up there, though. And and these two young guys, they proved it in the past when they were in, uh, in like, MLW and stuff, how they can hold their own. And that's why they got signed. And that's, you know, right. and, and, and for them to come in and for uh, – um, for the bookers on NXT web, whether it be Triple H, Shawn Michaels, or whoever made the decision to put the straps on them, or championships, how people like to call them, or titles, whatever, the belts, I think they made a smart decision because just like they said it before, uh NXT is where the new stars are, the, the new and upper comers, and and that's what right. they're, they're trying to grow. Them. But the but the thing I don't like I I, I kind of see where like um like uh they might be trying to push him too fast though too at the same time. I agree they should have the belts. I do, but I think they got him too too soon though, too at the same time. Yeah, they deserve the belts. No, one thousand percent. When uh they first got the belts, there was nobody in that uh Roster that was really kicking, you know, with the tag team divisions. Not when, uh, maybe I would say about half a year back when you had a uh, um War Machine and everybody else competing for it. Like it, it's a whole different scenario. So they deserved the belt, but I, I think Timothy needed that 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 shine. That's just me, you know. And I agree with what you guys are saying. I understand that, you know. MSK should have went over, but I think it should have been like a a rubber mash finish towards the end. You know, coming towards uh the end of summer, uh SummerSlam, like have Chomp on Tommaso win, and then for a hot second they win, but they don't get the uh, belts back. And then at the end at SummerSlam, you have MSK recapturing. Basically saying, but, yeah, we are the best team. But 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 the question here, though, it, what you're putting out there that that I'm a little leery about is though you're putting out there as SummerSlam, though, dude. That's yeah. like six weeks away. I, I I get that though, but you mean them fighting for the titles on SummerSlam show or that SummerSlam NXT weekend? SummerSlam NXT weekend. Okay, like, okay, like, okay. Like, like, the way you were worrying, no, no, I, I, no, I was no, thinking no, you were no, going to no. say you, you, at SummerSlam. You divide why. the prize. You yeah. divide the prize. You, you have last night as step one, three weeks as step two, and three to four weeks as the final step. You know what I mean? Make it a little serious because they did have chemistry in the match, as we all agree, was, was excellent. It was real excellent. Now, um, the next match at hand was the million dollar championship. I want to let you guys handle this because I don't even want to speak about this. Uh, you, you you didn't like it that much. I don't like how the title is being played. I think is garbage. I, I think the way they brought Eli Drake back into the premises is garbage. I think the way they they using uh Grimes like at Takeover he should have went over because they basically. Gave you the whole storyline on a platform from fucking 89, 91 when Virgil was the 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 butler. It's going to happen that they're going to get pissed off. The same old, same old. And somewhere down the line, Grimes is going to fight back and get the title back. It made no sense that way. It was too predictable. It, it, 
just didn't capture my attention. It just it wasn't me. I'm sorry. Guys, your thoughts? Um, first off, I don't think the million dollar belt is a championship or a title. I just think it's a prop and an item. Um, I'll never consider it in any of those lines. And I'm not being I'm not trying to be disrespectful to the million dollar it, it, man. It, I'm just from a fan standpoint, I can give two rats ass about that belt. Thank you. Um, and I and here's the thing: I like both competitors. Okay, thank I'm a you. Big I do. Fan of both competitors. I get the whole where they're going with it. Am I a fan of the whole? No, because it's been done. It's a re- recycled yes, storyline. It's recycled stuff. It's like I want new shit. Okay. Thank you, sir. And here's my thing: NXT has always been giving us new stuff. It's never been really recycled stuff. And they finally just gave us something that's been recycled. done. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, they haven't done this angle in a long time. So I don't hate it as much. I think they should have dragged it out a little bit longer, did it a way different way, but right. with no belt in the way. Like, because here's the thing Ted, B- Ted DiBiase just got knocked out by LA Knight. Now, now, my, my, where my is question he? is, my, yeah, exactly. That's the question I would just want to ask. Where is I was he? Just about like, to say, why would Grimes are they going to. Are they going to keep Ted around and bring him back in for some more stuff? Or it was like, okay, that's it. You're done, Ted. And and, and we're just going to focus on uh, on uh, Knight and Grimes now. What do you think, Mike? Right. I, I was wondering if, you know, like toward the end of that, uh, you know, somewhere in the middle or toward the end of that match, were they going to have Ted DiBiase come out and cause a distraction of some sort? Like he didn't even play a factor in that whole match at at all, you know. Like like Dennis said, where's Ted DiBiase at, you know? Uh, yeah. And I, I did feel the recycleness of like, yeah, okay, it brings all of us who's been watching it for a long time back to the old days. But yeah, you gotta if it's gonna be something new, put a new twist on it, you know. That's what lost me without having Ted in the picture or somewhere with Ted involved in that match, bro. That would have cost Grimes to lose it. I was, I was, I was like, huh? Like as soon as the finish went off, brother. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm thinking with the whole Butler thing. If they go the route and do the whole Virgil and Ted DiBiase fight, where, 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 where Grimes is tired of being a Butler and they're gonna, uh. Uh, do the blow off match between Knight and Grimes. I'm thinking then DiBiase will make a surprise appearance then and help Grimes go over then. I, I could see that. <clears throat> like again, I have a feeling Grimes. Like I did say eventually on that in that card there was going to be a screw job. None of the matches that I called were going to have a that happened had a screw job. Besides a match that I didn't care too much about, actually had his first <laughs> job at the end. Yeah, but if they're gonna do it, they got Ted has to be involved. Ted has has to has to has to has to be involved. Grimes is over. You're right. Grimes yes. is over. That's no, a, definitely. Thank you, Mike. He is. Well, here's the thing. Grimes has been over since he debuted, and I hate. And I'm not trying to like bring you know use another company's name. But when he debuted in Impact, when they were in Allentown doing their tapings, and he debuted there, and his first match was against um, Pepper or something, and uh, they destroyed. They like they were a phenomenal, just breathtaking match. I was like, wow, okay, this is great. And then they had him in the X Division title match, and then he won the X Division title in the same week. Like within three shows, he's the champion. And just started with the company. Now, here's something that I have to disagree agree with. If you guys take a look at the screen real quick, uh, you would see this by Mike Harano. He says, L.A. Knight is a bad bet all around. I disagree with that. I disagree. I disagree. And that's... That's our homeboy, but you talked to I haven't talked to that's him in my a long brother from another mother. I haven't talked to Mike in a long time. We disagree all the time, but that's normal. And, and, well, I, do you do you agree or disagree with uh, him? what was the question? I, I went no, to he said the- he, he commented that I'll I'll throw it back up on the screen uh one more time. He said LA Knight is a bad bet all around, and you'll probably see it shortly bad on fit. no a bad bet. 
I disagree. I think he's amazing on the microphone. I think he he Absolutely. brings he he brings a charisma that not many people have. The thing is, his wrestling, he's a great worker, but he doesn't have magic in that ring. And that's just my personal opinion. I, I think to be a phenomenal, and when I say great work, I mean elite, Brett, you know, we're talk, not even Lance Storm, we're talking RV, you, you know, if you want to talk about worker workers, he, he, he's he a has, workhorse. He, he, he has worker ability, but he needs that one niche. And he gets that right. one niche. He needs that one match to put him out there to make everyone one, notice him. Not just niche. his right. Once he gets that one niche, it's off and running with it's, Eli. But till then, he's just basically another mid car warrior. Well, well, it's like for him to get that one match to make everyone notice him and not just a fan to like him. Yeah. It, Dennis, agree with me? Please. I'm like, I know you're a huge fan of this guy, Dennis, already. Uh, cause you already made it, made it, uh, known that um, you are a fan of the Miz. I love him. I, I think the, he's the on the mic. And I said, when he uh, had yeah. that WrestleMania moment in the main event, then I became a Miz fan. That's when I became a Miz fan. When, 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 when he, like I said, and that's what LA Knight needs. He needs that oh. one match to let the people who like the naysayers, the ones who really don't. Who, who's kind of on the fence about him, who kind of don't like him. He needs that one match for everyone to go, okay, finally, you know what? I'm going to swallow my pride and say, yes, he's a good worker. No, I agree, 100%. Yep. I honestly, I, I'm going to say it this way. I say LA Knight has the Miz mentality to do everything the Miz has done. He is 100% just like the Miz. No one is a real big fan of him. They think he's cocky, arrogant, all this and that. But he proves it in and out, in and out of the ring that he deserves to be there on the mic, off the mic, in the ring. But he is missing something. And if you look back, the Miz was missing something when he first started too, until they actually gave him an opportunity, and then he was bam, off to the races. Uh, Eventually, yeah. L.A. Knight's gonna, you know, if the Million Dollar Man, if Ted DiBiase is really working with these two with this whole angle, I guarantee. LA Knight's going to shock us in the next couple of weeks or buy SummerSlam with, here's what you guys have been waiting for. Here it is. I'm waiting until we have a big arena. <clears throat> Again, a lot of these fan workers in WWE NXT, I guarantee you Shawn Michaels and Hunter and them are all having them hold back a little bit until there's a full capacity crowd. I think right. the guy, that, that's what I think. I think the guy that could make people notice him even more Right now, at the if, if but I'm not gonna say they're gonna do it. I I don't see it happen at all. Is him working Adam Cole? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, they both can honestly, work the mic. Yes, honestly, I'm I'm gonna say here's three guys that LA Knight could absolutely go out and probably give us the match that we're all waiting for. That's missing something. One is Adam Cole, absolutely. Two would probably be uh, Kyle O'Reilly. Yeah, true. And three true. would probably be Champa, like or and four. Oh, def Gargano. Def oh, def four. Def four. Uh, Here, top four, Gargano. Any one of those yes, four guys yes. in him will get what we what we are all what he's missing. We they yes. will find something that's missing and make him happen. That is period. correct. I, I, like, I, I and that would be that you. would be so awesome if that's what they eventually uh, lead to. If it if it turns into that, uh, I would be so psyched and so pumped. Because I, I like LA Knight. I think he's great. And uh, I, I have that same feeling. Like, he's just missing that something. But, yeah, I have a feeling eventually we're going to get it. By the All way, right. Mike's commenting on this stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, he's saying... saying uh, who's this? The, uh, his, oh, Mike, yeah. He's yeah, he goes, there's something missing, which we all agree with. Um, don't get me wrong. I don't dislike him or his work. We're not saying, Mike, you do. We're just disagreeing with your bet that he's bad. He's a bad bet all right. around. That's it. Um, goodness, he got, now I couldn't stand him. Mike's look, saying the same thing about the Miz, what I said. He couldn't stand him, but now he's a fan. See, look, I've been, he, a, he, I've been a fan difference. of the Miz since day one. So. Yeah, I love the Miz since day one because I knew he was going to be straight heat coming from TV. I knew he was going to be straight fire, nothing but we don't want you here. 
And that already said we selling tickets with the man. Oh, oh, oh my God! Wait, who who just popped up on it? Doyle, is this is this Doyle de, uh, Day? Oh, is this Doyle Day that I see? I, I, I I'm trying to see at the his his Facebook picture. I think, dude, it is Doyle Day. Oh my God! I haven't seen this dude. Yo, thank you for jumping in. Great podcast, guys. Keep it up. Thank you. Appreciate it, brother. But oh yes, sir. Yes, it is. It. All right. Like Dude, a, long time no see. Like I was my first tag team partner. <laughs> yeah, sweet. <laughs> the Miz, <laughs> I've been a fan of. I like. I knew he's gonna be straight heat as soon as he came in. Anybody, anybody, especially coming up in our world. When I say our world, I'm talking about the guys that grew up in the ass in the nine nine to the early start of two thousand <laughs> when we used to get beat up for chips and hot dogs. You know what I mean? <laughs> you don't even get that when you start sometimes. <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean? And we used to get bit. I said this dude is gonna be a fucking heat man. I knew it from the get go. <laughs> and then his wrestling skills were safety. He did not injure anybody, but he wasn't bad, and people didn't like that. He didn't like that. It took his feud with D. Bryan to be able to respect him as a pro wrestler. It took him to get noticed with The Rock and Cena to take him seriously. So I loved the Miz from day one. The Miz been. I, I've been a misfit dog. Uh, you know what? You know what? This makes a lot of sense. Doyle just commented. He, wouldn't you love to see L.A. Knight wrestle a returning Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Yes. I, I would have capital F U C K. Yes. Can can you <laughs> picture L.A. Knight cutting a promo, and next thing you know, he gets interrupted, and a mic drops out of the ceiling. And out comes Kennedy and tears him an asshole. Look, I would mar, I would pop his shit for that. Like <laughs> that would it, be excellent. Think, it's somebody that you, let's be real. We all don't see ever returning back to Vince McMahon's company. No, 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 no. But, no. After the whole but, Randy but, thing and things like that, nah, man. If it happened, <laughs> well, it we say never say never. <laughs> it would be something that would rock the internet. Period. But like, that would that would actually be the match to take him to. It's not even Adam Cole. You just said it straight up. If you take Mister Kennedy and take Eli Drake and just let him go at it on a mic, yes. like all you do is give him restrictions. Don't say this. Just, don't say just this. Just drop the mic battle. That's all. Yeah, a freestyle <laughs> battle. But it's up to you. Ooh, child. I paid for that shit. All right, gentlemen. Uh, let's move along with the NXT. Like, like I said, it was only four four matches. Uh, match number three, they had uh, the tag team champions of The Way, Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell, defended their titles against Zoe Starks and Io Shirai, which and here we have new NXT women's tag team champions. Gentlemen, anybody, jump in. I didn't like the match. And here's what Dennis was talking about. The only tag match that had the screw job in it right toward the end. <laughs> Look. And I, I kind of knew off that distraction. I was like, okay, here we go. Now we're going to have new tag team champions. Yep. But, you know, you saw that one a mile away. Look, I didn't like it. I did not like it at all. Like, I... I I respect the women, but the thing that I hated the most was the reveal of who was coming back. I think Tegan Knox got screwed over with the shittiest return because, mm. you know, she was been out with, with an injury. They right. should have did this build up for about a two months with little by little. What's her name gets a little card that says 10 percent, 20 percent. Little screens pop up during the Ways match. So at this pay-per-view on Tuesday night, when it hits 100%, everybody's wondering who the hell it is. And it gives it a little bit more, uh, it, it, that effect that, oh, wow, holy shit. I didn't think of that. I just thought it was someone new coming to the company. No, Tegan Knox is a phenomenal worker. Yes, there was a screw job. Do I think they should have lost titles on a screw job? No. Did I see it happening when that happened? Absolutely. Because yeah. you know the now there's another match going to be going on with Tegan Knox and her, but 
I wasn't a, I, I didn't fall in love with the match at all. Was not. It you had four talented women, four athletic women, and I I, I wasn't sold. And that ending killed it for me. That that was not a good ending for me. Hey, hey, I I, I just I got a text message here from uh Pat. It says no love for Charles Platt, meaning CJ. He he's commenting. I see him commenting in the in the in the chat room. I'm sorry, CJ, but a lot of you know, it's nothing that that really that bites out to us that really stands out, you know. I uh, honestly got to bring your A game, CJ. Bring your A game uh, with your uh, uh with, look, with we, your comments, we, and we'll throw them up on the on the on the screen. We did miss a comment from at nine twenty five. It said should be a number one contenders match for the NXT North America Championship, not the million dollar title. It's uh, not a title. It's a pro- it's just a prop. Yeah. But those guys, yeah, they didn't. I, I'll never again. I'll never call that golden shiny thing a title or belt <laughs> ever like it's cool it's nice to give somebody something different but yeah no yeah nothing does nothing for me sometimes you just scratch your head at certain uh things that the e does and look like, i scratch like, my and head you're like I, you're like why i scratch my head on a lot of things that are talked about in the chat too but i'm just kidding no, yeah leave that. I'm um, gonna drink my alcoholic beverage called Viking Blood. Con- congratulations! Yeah, I got my nice. Lipton Diet Green Tea. You got your energy drink. What you got over there, Mike? I got some. Uh, I got some regular iced tea. <laughs> Boring old iced tea. <laughs> we can't see it, so it never happened. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> in, in my in my color right. changing cup. <laughs> okay, all right. Gotcha. All right. Uh, since nobody here is really happy with the women's match, which uh, the only thing I liked was uh, I'm uh, happy. Uh, my baby mama's back, Tiki Knox. <laughs> but that, 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 that's how I, I, um, I, I was happy to see the return of Index. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dexter Loomis and, and, and uh, Indy. When when oh. uh, he left carrying her, oh, okay. index. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh god! All right, <laughs> All right. now the main you. event of the night, heat of battle. Both guys, former partners in the in the group of damn brain fart. What's the name of the group again that they were part of? Undisputed. Undisputed. Undisputed era. That's right. Now they're. Undeniably, one of the best groups that got broken up way too. I'm thinking, I'm gonna say way too fast, even though it was like what a uh, year or two they were together. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, years, I'm gonna longer than that. Oh, well, I, but I'm yeah, I think they should have stayed together. No, I'm gonna disagree. I'm gonna say it was time to break them up, but it was not time to keep them on NXT. It, it was time to ship Adam Cole up to the main roster and, and let everybody else, you know. I, I honestly, ground. I think he's ready for the main roster, but does he want to go to it? That's the thing. Though. No, listen, yeah. right. Alex exactly. Black has pretty much made it pretty clear to these workers that if they go up there, they're fucked. Yeah, because like, 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 look at Keith Lee right shit. now. Literally, there's workers on the internet shitting all over how about when you come from NXT, you go up there, there's nothing for you. Here's, and I'm not trying to knock Aleister Black or Tommy Gunn or my, my, Malachi Black, whatever the hell his freaking name's going to be now. <laughs> I can't yeah. keep up with this shit. But Alistair Black got let go. No one really knows what the real reasons were. We're we going to get into that a little bit right, later because right. we, we see, we've all Cole, seen what happened. Yeah. yeah, we all know what happened. Yes. And there's stuff I got to talk about that. But the reason Adam Cole, when he goes to the main roster, he's not going to have a problem at all. No, he, no, he, not he, at he, all. He, he, literally, watch. I'm going to do that. Down. I can no. say, hey, here's he's your watch. A, Here, here's my her, watch. This is he's untouchable. Line. He's part of a. Uh, he is part of the click. So and yeah, so. Yeah, basically. Yeah. He. he right, 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 right there. As soon as he goes up, he's a top guy. He's made. It's, he's it's made. not that. It's not that. You can give. He could wear a white suit. Okay. And fall in a puddle of mud. And still come out in a white clean suit because he is that goddamn good at giving crap. You can give him the biggest pile of crap to work with and he will make it gold. 
He will make it money. He will make the fans in, their attention is going to be invested in it. And, and, and no matter what, you know, you, you got guys that, you know, you worked all over the Indies with and all over the country and all over the world with. Yeah. And you put them together as one group that you thought was going to fail. The only people that didn't think it was going to fail was Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Everybody else thought it was going to be the joke. It wasn't going to work. It went on for longer than two years, these guys. And they made it so over. This Whether they were the bad guys or the good guys, people paid to see that group. I'm going to kind of disagree with you because as soon as they were all assembled, I was all in. I'm like, oh, this is the Ring of Honor NWO coming in. This is dope. they were like to, to me, they were like the horsemen. Basically, no, no, they I were the them. bad guys, they were the bad guys, but they were the ones that were so cool you liked them a lot so much. No, no, I loved them putting them together. I thought it was a great decision on their part. I'm saying there's people in the company that thought it was gonna be now, a lot now, of now the joke. thing I didn't see coming and happening. I did not see Roderick Strong. Uh, be, becoming part of the group, but when he did, and then it just gelled so perfectly. I'm like, holy shit! Yes. So, but you know what? We're missing out here. Uh, yo, that match against Kyle O'Reilly was off the chain. I tell you that much. Part one was better. Part part one was better. <laughs> and Doyle Day, Doyle, you're right. They were together as a group as the Bull Club, so it did work. You're right, and it's. They already had that chemistry built, and and it's not just from that; it's from them working each other from all all over these other shows and promotions. Like they they know each other to where you could say one word, and the next guy knows how to feed off of you, and then the next guy knows how to feed off of that guy, yep. and so on and so they on. They just gelled together so, like perfectly, and that was before they came into E, and before they were in ROH and on New Japan doing all this. These guys just. Those are the guys. That's the wrestling that I miss to where you could put someone that doesn't know anybody from Adam's Hole the Ground. Me or Vert, me. Well, bring up me, you, me, you, and Vinny Hoffa didn't know Adam, me, any one of us at all. And we were the three on two handicap match at ACPW. And then we made it work and we gelled. Now, That's now, wrestling. Now, yo, if, if, right. if Adam Cole only threw super kicks in an entire match. <laughs> <laughs> just the way he lands those sons of bitches, like it's like it's like sweet. It's like like okay, you got the young bucks who claim to be you know you know the super kick party and all this because they're always throwing. But Adam Cole, the way he just lays them in there, they're just like, uh. It's because I, I, I just be hurt. He does like, he he doesn't baby them. He throws them like Shawn Michaels did. And it's either yeah. I think honestly, I think he throws them. That's who I think of uh, when I see uh, he, he him do that super kick is Shawn Michaels. Like right away, yeah, Adam Cole is such a great worker, and uh, I agree, it gelled perfectly. Uh, I don't think he should go up to the main roster just yet. Mm -mm -mm. No, I think it's time for him to go up there. Here's the thing: in in professional wrestling, it's called sink or swim. You either A, you're going to swim with the big fish, or you're going to sink with the big fish. I'm not saying NXT is not big fish, but it's not the main roster. The main roster is Raw and SmackDown. So if you want to know if you can hang with, without a doubt, the best wrestlers in the world, and I'm not taking away from New Japan or ROH or any of them, because they were all, every nationalized television show company has the best wrestlers in the world. But Monday Night and SmackDown have, without a doubt, the best wrestlers that are on the top of their game, whether they have good stuff to go with. If Adam Cole wants to make it any further, he needs to be able to go up there and do exactly what he's done everywhere else he's gone and become a star. Now, so, now a question I got now. With that match there in particular, as well as the tag match in the opening of the night, do you feel a lot of NXT talent as well as the indie scene, they're given all these crazy ass finishers and spots, but everyone's always kicking out. You know, I think it's oversaturated of like what happened to the good old days where, you know, 
where like, okay, your finisher is your finisher, but now you got to hit your, your, your fucking finisher like four or five times. Nah, you, like, man, I'm out. built different. I'm built different. You can't do that on me, son. When we go out there, you got to hit me with a kick like five times directly <laughs> in the nose, son, directly in the nose. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. Directly in the nose, son. Five times in a row. I'm and annoyed by it. That, a spinning tombstone. That should be the three. I'm annoyed by it. I'm annoyed by it. I can't stand that crap. Oh, like, too, dog. <laughs> listen, listen. No, no. The biggest, the, the worst one of them all just happened on AEW. Which one? Sammy I Gazzaro. love AEW. I do too. Sammy, Sammy Gazzaro, Gazzaro and oh, MMK. MMK, the two MMK third MMK. on the second row. Yes, last week. Like, yes. What in the fuck? No, 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 no. Rewatch it. Rewatch it. Rewatch it. When it it, it 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 was he goes to count and when uh Rick not goes to hit the last three the hand gets caught you have to watch it to see it because I was on your boat too and then I rewatched it and it, it I swear on everything is on the final second you will see Rick Knox's hand get caught and he made a smack, and that's what everybody like. That was a three. That was a three. <laughs> but no, sir, I saw it. I like I was on the same boat, and somebody caught it on Twitter, and, and they had it on slow mo. He did not hit the three. That was like the slickest thing I have ever seen. But yes, sir, and you have to rewind it and watch it. No, I'm not. I'm not talking about the whole the count. I'm talking about like that move was a finish. Oh yeah, the the tombstone from the top. Yes. Yeah, that that was yes. the finish. Because like, you know why? Finish. Because psychology is a lost art, according yes, to fucking Doyle. Is. And uh, yes, it is. I, I get yes, dumped on my head. <laughs> I'm laying down. <laughs> you know it's why psychology is a lost art? Because you have again, we've we we've brought this up multiple shows, Chio. Schools nowadays don't teach psychology. They just want to teach fucking wrestling moves. That's it. You don't learn how to work. You don't know how to. You don't get taught how to be a character anymore. You don't get taught how to cut promos anymore. You get there. You stretch out. You, you work don't, on wrestling you, moves. You That's don't get it. taught how to work the crowd the right way. No, where, no, no. When, 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 whether you're peeking through the uh, uh, curtain, looking on the monitor in the back, or even when you get out there and you're doing a quick scan of the crowd, look for your targets out there. Look for, for the real. little old ladies, you know, the, the one that bitch who complain. smells, yeah, whatever. Uh, you know, there's my plenty thing, of them, you know that. It was always this uh, a common thing. I came up growing in the business where it was like, for some reason, Dennis, I hope you can agree with me on this, that um, in every indie show, uh, you can find uh, in the front <laughs> row a really huge lady. With a guy with no teeth. That's your mark. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> or you know, <laughs> just find, you know what I'm well, that, that was kind of common. Uh, you know, that's what I grew up with. You know? <laughs> it, it depends where you <laughs> it, 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 Is it that you gonna find a really old old man well, hold with up. a flat is shirt it, uh, and suspenders uh, that smells like coors? Is that the farmers <laughs> market? No. <laughs> hold on, listen, listen. It depends where you work. A show at. Like if you're in Reading, absolutely is there a person up front with a man with no teeth. But there's also the fans. ready, ready, ready. All right. There's also little kids that sit up in the front row, and workers are scared to talk shit to a little kid. You know why? Hell, I no, know because you know what? Because a, a lot of times they're afraid, they're afraid, of, the afraid of mommy and daddy. You know what? I don't care. You know what I am? I'm a bad guy. You know what I'm gonna do? You yes. pay twenty dollars to sit in that front row and hey, tell me, me I suck. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell you your mom did last night with me. And if not that, I'm going to tell you your mom should have swallowed. But you know what? He, I don't care. Here's the thing, though. Here, here's the thing. What, 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 like, <laughs> you got to know, you got to know your crowd. You got to know your yeah. fans. You got to know yeah. how far you can take it. You know, you can right. tell just by looking at them, by their emotions on their faces, the, you know, and, and the way they react. You can tell how far you want to try. Take it to the edge, but don't cross that line because at yeah. the end of the day, a lot they are paying to come see us. They are yeah. going to buy your merchandise and this and that. And and there's been plenty of times where I'm out there healing it up, healing up. And at the same time, during intermission or at the end of the show, 
one of the parents are coming up with their kid. Hey, can my kid get a picture with you? Can I get the autograph? I'm like, and they and the parents are like, yo, we understand you're out there. You know, you're doing your row. My kid loved it. This and that. Even though, oh, yeah. you know, you know, I'm like, I'm cool. I'll take a picture. I'm like, I'll have your kid strangle me for, for, for the picture and all that. I'm glad he, uh -huh. he came happy. He's going away happy. Uh, and, and like I said, I knew my limits of yep. how to uh, be the bad guy, but not be in yes disrespectful. Though. It's not just the fans. It's the location of the show. Yes. Like, I know in Philadelphia, I can push the boundaries to, like, I'm way over the line because it's Philadelphia. And, uh, uh, yeah, well, I, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Compare, don't don't like, get me started. If I have to compare, like, if I, when I wrestle in Reading, I know I have to tone it down about six notches compared to where I could be in Philly and I could be in level 10 or 15, depending on what's in the venue for crowd-wise. But, like, if I'm going to wrestle for Triple WA, yeah, I know I ain't saying any of that garbage. But I'm going to find somebody, <laughs> and I'm going to make fun of them. You see what Mike says? He says, fuck them kids. That's why I but, was laughing a minute but, ago. But after that, he says, <laughs> my, my son, son loves, loves that, that shit. shit. <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> when I say I push boundaries, when I said um, that their mom should have swallowed, I legit said that at a show in Philly and didn't know it was my opponent's kids. Oh, damn. Oh, and dude. the fact that they popped, like the crowd gave me the, oh, shit. And I and I turned away and Mike Keener was my referee and goes, hey, that was Ron Starr's kids. And I'm like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> oh, you're fucked. <laughs> Ron Starr is the most religious person in the world. And I Yo, love Ron Starr. Ron's one of the most respectful brothers yes. out oh, there. He's, like, not like, only, I, he's a locker room leader. He's a teacher in the locker room. He is a mentor in the locker room. He's everything you could possibly think. That's the guy you want in your locker room. I, I, I told I told Ron and DJ Danzar, which he's a preacher as well. I told him, I said, look, we, we all knew each other for a long time. If something ever, God forsaken, ever happens to me, in my life, I want I want Danzar and Ron to do my funeral. I said, hands down. I said, I don't want nobody else. I want you guys to do it. Is there an open mic at your funeral? Uh, Let's pray. Maybe open <laughs> bar. Maybe open <laughs> bar. But you can't. You can't not have it. Like if I if I say this, if I ever pass pour away, some out for your homie. <laughs> like I'm gonna tell you right now, if I ever when I do pass away in my will. I literally told them in there, they hand the workers a microphone and I want them to like, shoot. Just, be, just shoot and be a little me. <laughs> like, go ahead. I can't do nothing. I'm already dead. But because <laughs> that's the way I am, I want you to like crack jokes on me while I'm laying there in my car as long, and hey, have as, fun with it. As, as long as it doesn't happen during drinking and driving. And speaking of drinking and driving, our next topic is a gentleman who's got pulled over for a DUI who worked for the WWE for the third, uh, you're right, for the third time. And uh, I believe it's his, I, be I believe it's his second time for, for DUI though. Uh, Jimmy Uso. He was uh, incarcerated in Pensacola, F Florida. Uh, he was arrested for a DUI. Uh, after Monday night, uh, I guess he left, uh, I guess he was at the show or whatever, but it was around 10.35 p.m. And, and they pulled him over and they, and they whacked his ass up. And, you know, he was while wow, he, he was doing 55 in a 35 mile zone. So, you know, oh, there's more to it now. I didn't know. I don't know if you saw that article yet. I read no, the whole I, article. Now. Oh, no, there's more to it. Uh -uh. So I didn't see that. not only did he was he doing 55 in a 35, but he blew a red light. That's how he got pulled over by an unmarked car. On top of that, they asked yeah, the cop to smell the alcohol. He got out of the car. Um, everything was fine until he started walking back to his car. And the cop, the trooper, recognized, realized that he couldn't walk a straight line. Which, you know, I'm, Jimmy Uzo has took, agreed to take a, you know, the field sobriety test and failed it up and down. He failed two breathalyzers, not one, but two of them. Now, he blew a wow. point. He he blew a point two oh three and then a point two oh five. In my opinion. He is done. Goodbye. 
you kissed your career goodbye and out the door because you're an effing idiot. Anybody in this business that is in that position should have used common effing sense. Like, now, here's the thing that's sure. I'm leery about with you saying bye. Question is, with the history of McMahon has with the oh, they're going to the family the with, with, with with the family, uh, and with so much that um, he is one of the top guys there. Uh, I don't see them getting rid of him. I see them no, sent, try, try, trying to send him to rehab or something to get to get him cleaned up. Yeah, you know. that's what's but he happen. definitely needs to go to rehab. The other thing on top yes. of it, though, that's. The other thing is, it's got to be embarrassing to not just the company, to his family. You know, like this is like the, this is the third time of getting in trouble with that. You know, and you're a public figure. You know, they're pushing you that it's at that you're at the top of the company. You're with Roman Reigns, and then you get in trouble for the third time with that. that, that that's I don't know. I, think, I mean, they'll probably send them to rehab, but I don't know. I don't know how they're going to handle it after that. I think on a company standpoint, he's all right because <sighs> his cousin is basically the head of the table. What? Legit. Well, so, it's, not, it's not even that, though, too. It's just that, like, um, WWE throughout the years has been more focused on helping stars get in treatment for whether it's drug or alcohol. And, and 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 whatever else though, so they've been focused on bettering their their uh, talent. Even when they leave the company too, there's been talent who left the company that they still help, you know, on the side. But well, they, 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 they're gonna give them to watch the help. video. They, they they always gonna put up the help. You know that they're gonna put up the help. It's up to Jimmy, you know, Oops, if he wants to take it or not. Uh, but they they're gonna give him the help. They always been given the help. How many times Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton been on? On the chopping block, yeah, oh, especially yeah, Jeff. No. Though I mean, come on. Well, That's Doyle it. Doyle Day is saying to watch the video. This time he got screwed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch a video. I didn't know there's a video released yet of the whole traffic stop, and I'm gonna I'm gonna voice my opinion once I watch it. Then I'll I'll take my statements back because if I feel like this cop was being racist or anything in that line, then absolutely he he was. You know there was diff there's different things involved. Now, now the thing but is, I don't know with the body cam or or, or, or the, the whole cam, cam in the car. They just released the cam. They they have footage. Is there of audio, the but is there audio? That's the question, though. Yep. So, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna watch it and listen to it right now while you guys are talking. All right. Uh, well, uh, now I'm so I'm sorry. I'm just a little because <laughs> he's 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 watching the video right now. Uh. We had a loss in the world of professional wrestling uh, recently. Uh, it, was, it was a gentleman who passed away at the age of 59. He, he had some of his great matches uh, in Japan, WCW, when he was with uh, partners with uh, Marcus Bagwell as Stars and Stripes. Uh, he feuded with, I believe, Bret Hart in, uh, in the WWF. For the championship one time, he was with Global Wrestling Federation, AWA. He was all over the world and stuff like that. It was uh, Del Wilkes, also known as the Patriot. Patriot. Yeah. yeah. Now, Patriot, you know, he, he trained with Vern Gagne and 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 the and the fabulous Mula, and and he debuted back in 1988. And then uh, when when you know. Things took a turn for the worst later in life. You know, he got he got injured, and you know, then he then he couldn't wrestle no more. And then, uh, but he made appearances here and there once in a while. And I, you know, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Dell's fam, um, his family and stuff. You know, he'll be greatly missed. Uh, he, he's one of the guys I actually I actually enjoyed watching a, as a mass character out there. And, and, and no lie, I actually. I actually liked him as Stars and Stripes with Marcus Bagwell back in the day. How about how about you? <laughs> Sorry, my energy drink was getting low. I was about to get another one, and I was pissing. My bad. We bladder. Right. I'm older. Yes, we but have right behind the curtain here. We have 
a, a whole uh, pantry. Like if this we, was we, a wrestling center, that will be the epitome of backstage catering. We got the refrigerator back there. <laughs> Here we got where you can get your haircut back there. We got the sink. Wow. We got, you know, ladies, back there if, we run a, if we run a show in this front yard, ladies, we have a salon we can, we washer. Can actually, that if you I can, could, you we can actually do a hair, show in, in front of the house. We can put the ring in front of the house. The entrance could be my front garage right there. And I got the sound. So every, everything will be right here. And we'd be good. But, uh, yeah, your thoughts on Del Wilkes? Uh, in all honesty, as you know from yesterday when you texted me, I did not know he was died. I thought he was still lived. No, but your thoughts on him as the person, but, as the wrestler he was, the Patriot, and, you know. Really? You want me to go there? What, you didn't care for him too much, really? No, sir. His best thing was with Bret Hart, and that's because it's Bret motherfucking Hart. And, and that was at... Uh, in that's, your house, and that's yeah. that's the biggest thing he ever did. Otherwise, that to me, I'm sorry. Uh, blessings to his I, I, family, I'll say, I'll say, and rest in peace. But he didn't do it to me as a performer. That's just me. I, I honestly, I think his biggest push of all was when he was with Global Wrestling Federation. That's when I think he was the most over in in general. I think in his whole career. I think after he moved up to like. WCW and WWE, you know, he, he, yeah, great. He was there, but uh, he didn't have that impact with the with the uh, with the fans that he did then. My right, as he did with the Indies. Uh, yeah, that's true. Uh, I, I guess, I guess it, I don't know if it was c because he was with such big name talent like. Uh, especially Bret Hart, but I thought it was that was pretty good. And in your house against Bret Hart, that was a good match. And I guess a lot of matches with Bret Hart are great. <laughs> oh yeah, D Bret can make make a man no matter who, who he works. Bret's just one of those guys who can go in. Um, yeah, he can. Yeah, the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. And, 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 and everybody knows I'm a huge Bret Hart and Hart Foundation mark. And uh, I'm gonna leave it at that, though. Oh man, the old Heart Foundation. We have that another, takes me back. We have another subject that uh, my good buddy here probably don't want to touch upon, and we're gonna talk about the WWE lawsuit, law, the class action lawsuit against uh, um, they well they settled a class action lawsuit against investors who accused the company, uh. Of misleading them when it comes to their business with Saudi Arabia, and WWE will be paying thirty nine million in the end. That's right. Wow! Million. And okay. here's the reason I'm gonna let you at that. I don't want none of the smoke for the repercussions. I know exactly how rich these Saudi people are. I done deployments. I'm touching this subject. There's a reason Vince is gonna pay up. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. Now, good gentlemen, do your bid. Now that 39 million is just a, a, a figure of 18.2 percent of the damages investors are or, originally seeking. Now the the lawsuit stems from WWE's television deal with Saudi Arabia, or in this case, lack thereof. Uh, a final approval. For the settlement in federal court in New York was approved by Judge Jed S. Rakoff. I hope I said the last name right. I don't know. I don't care. According to Bloomsburg Wall. <laughs> Anyone who purchased WWE stock from February 7th, uh, 2019 through February 5th, 2020 and lost money will be receiving some sort of a compensation. Those who either worked with or close ties to WWE will not get anything. So if you work for the company or you have any kind of connection, you won't get nothing. Now, out of all this, the wow. biggest winner will be the law firm who spearheaded the case as they will get $7 million in attorney fees and additional half a million in expenses. Now... Gentlemen, are you all there? Oh yeah. Okay. 
That's uh, uh, because on my one screen here, everything. It's a lot of cash. It's a lot of. (laughs) Let, let it do there. He's going to have to fork out. Wow. Right. Jeez. Yeah, I didn't uh, know all that, all those yeah. details. Well, going off the Saudi Arabia thing, it was kind of funny uh, watching AEW. Dennis, did you see that on AEW with uh, uh, Britt Baker? Okay. Yeah, what, what was that? Uh, what was the, busy. supposedly she took a shot at WWE? Oh yeah, he said uh, said about the next AEW Dynamite could could be probably uh, be held in, in 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 Saudi Arabia. So that was like a little shoot from her. But it is what it is. Uh, you know, yep. it's not much to talk about. Uh, like a, a lot of people are not too much uh, into the uh, into the financial world of WWE and what's going on with them and the stocks and them. Selling, you know, oh, this and that, Peacock and everything like that. So, right. um, uh, so we're just gonna move on because they want to hear the juicy, grimy stuff and you know the and all the dumb shit. <laughs> um, Dennis, you're gonna help me out on this one here, which I know for a fact because uh, you mentioned that uh, Tommy Dreamer uh, tweeted out about uh, just recently talking with um, Terry Funk. Yeah, let me find that post. I had it. I had, I literally had it earlier, and then I had it saved. Well, okay. Before that, uh, the official Twitter account of uh, Terry Funk, you know, he has been confirmed that he was uh, dealing with health issues and currently uh, in an assistant uh, living facility. Um, you know, they say Funk's been dealing with uh, dementia, and uh, that you know. His uh, that Mr. Funk is currently receiving residential care for his multiple health issues, which do affect his mind as well as the rest of his body. As you can imagine, some days are better than others. Now, with the uh, tweet or or whichever one he put out there, uh, Dreamer did, he said he spoke with. Uh, funk and you said yep. you got it pulled up. Yeah, he go- Tommy Dreamer posted. He goes, just got off the phone with Terry Funk. He loves all his fans and that are uh, all the all of his fans are talking about him. He is fine and now he wants me to book an angle off this post. Uh, all this stuff, PR work. I speak to him a lot, so he is with it mentally. And why would Tommy Dreamer post something like that if it wasn't true? See, here, here's the thing. I have to go off of, though. Like, if someone in the fa- if they're saying, you know. Some days are better than others. So maybe that particular time when Tommy was talking to him, maybe it just one happened to be one of those better days where, uh, you know, things were, where, you know, some people with dementia, that you know, they remember clearly, like vividly, like it was just happened today or yesterday, whatever. And then there's times where they don't remember shit at all. Like, who the hell are you? This and that. So maybe he caught him on one of those uh. days, you know, but I like I I would hate to see that happen to anybody because it's like you start losing your memories, you start losing your 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 basically you start losing your family, even though they're there right there with you and you don't remember right. it. It yo, I, I would not wish that on on anybody because like then like wow. even though you're here, you're alone. You still feel alone. And then the but other I thing is I, I can't imagine how it is because you know. I, I have no idea what it, what it would it be like if I ever lost. Even if us taking bumps and getting the concussions and lose our, our memory, I, w- I I wouldn't know how. To... Uh, uh, like... I'll, I'll take a quick, brief hint at this, and I'm going to talk to you not as T Ray as Tony Ray is. I'm going to talk to you as Jose, the guy behind it, the guy that worked in the medical field, the guy that has a diploma to prove. So Terry is 77 years old. Terry took a lot of hits to the head. Terry yes, he is did. very old. Very old. Believe it or not, 77 is old, especially with the line of work he did. So he may be with it because he considers Tommy a loved one. Understand that. Tommy is a loved one. So he's going to be with it with Tommy. But once Tommy leaves, no one knows where his brain goes. You know what I mean? Um, he's old. 
that like we can't be shocked. He's old. All we need to do now is protect him. Be there yep. for him as a person, as a father figure, like he is to Tommy, or to all of us in the wrestling community, as he is like great crazy granddad that goes around swinging chairs. You got to protect him. You know what I mean? He, he's not in the right frame of mind right now. He's not gonna think he's the normal person he is. He's gonna think he's Terry Funk, the crazy wild man, still on the shows, and then maybe, maybe. He may clap down the family size and ask, where is his family? You know, and it's hard for him because if I'm correct, he lost his wife not too long ago. So, you know, with that stress on your on your mind, that, that's your partner. Yeah, about, about about two about two years ago. That's uh, your partner. That, that you know, and she's been with him through the road. So that's going to take some time in his head. So me speaking to you as a mer medical personnel, excuse me, it, it does affect, you know, all we have to do as Tony Ray is, is keep Funk's memory alive. Oh, definitely. No doubt. Uh, but, you know, he, he's old and all we got to do is protect him now, man. Oh, I agree 100%. Like, I have experience in the medical field, not from like RN or anything like that, but I did EMS stuff. I've done plenty of it. Mm -hmm. um, my dad's 70 and he's starting to get, you know, the beginning of old timers. And I can tell. Same um, huh? I was, I was going to say my dad separated short not too long ago, but let's not go there. Um, I didn't want to cut you off. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's good. Hey, my dad's shoulders messed up as well. And he's in a wheelchair. So like, do I understand exactly what's probably going on with Terry a little bit? Because there's some good days with my dad and some bad days with my dad. Some days he remembers everything he talked about a, a week ago. And then there's some days he doesn't remember shit from yesterday, but they'll never say he has dementia um, or they have, he just doesn't tell us. So do I believe Terry Funk has some issues from taking as much damage to his dome as he has? Absolutely. Do I think is he as bad as they say he is? No. Until I physically see someone from his actual family post about it, I will, I'm not going to believe it because it's not coming from them itself. And the family ain't going to post about it. So, like, not yeah. only did Tommy Dreamer post about what was said, as much as now many people like the guy, but Rob Freinstein posted about it, saying yeah. literally that he just talked to him as well. And nothing, he's seen, he's mentally, he's not as bad as the reports are. So, two people in within a, a 20 minute, to a three hour window that when that report came out, both deboshed it. It's like Rob Freinstein is not as close to Terry Funk as Tommy Dreamer is in a long like, shot. Like I said, when, when, right. when he's with families and whatnot, he's going to act a total different nation as he yep. is with like, let's say somebody that's there to give him medical assistance and whatnot. So he's going to act differently. And all we have to do for him is just be there for him. That's it. Oh, 100%. I agree. Like, I, I love Terry Funk. I used to live in Orlando, and I got to see him, meet him, and hang out with him all the time Um, when I did the TNA Street Team stuff and helped him down there. So, like, he was a down-to-earth, gentle human being. He still is a down-to-earth, gentle human being. You know, if the reports are true, you know, it's a matter of time, I, I'll say. And, you know, T, you, you being in the medical field, you already know what comes after all this. If it's really true, we already know where the what course comes next, unfortunately. You know, so like you said, we just got to be there for him and support him and show him love. So hopefully everybody that's watching, just keep posting about him. Let him know we all love him. Like, Basically, let him like, see that. Because yeah, that's what absolutely. The littlest stuff would make him so happy right now. You know, oh, like well, yes. if, if him and Tommy would do like a Instagram video, holy shit! I guarantee you, he'll shoot a promo of his lifetime. Because <laughs> it, it is in front of the camera, and Tommy's gonna tell him because he trusts Tommy. This is for your fans. I guarantee you, you want to see the old Terry Funk on that sixty second shoot. Uh oh, someone's trying to come in the room. I think. Nah, that's that's. Uh -oh. my, uh, my uh, tablet's acting up here. here. Um. Let me. Oh, okay. he took his face off there. It was a little too close yeah. for me. It was scary. 
it's okay. very... no my like uh i had the everything we're running off of it's running basically off the laptop over there but i'm using the tablet here to throw this stuff up because i can't be over there at my laptop so i got one thing running there and this one's here doing as my controls but other than that as long as that stays connected over what there what he's saying is his voice is supposed to be over everybody so make sure that you listen to him first now just as long as that <laughs> system is running over there we are all good we're all up and running it's just a tablet when i'm for some reason to connect because it's not a direct connect this i'm running off the wi-fi on this but we're all good though uh now Jumping over to the WWE Performance Center. Apparently, people were up on their tippy toes because they had a special visit just last uh, week. Last Thursday, matter of fact. It was none other than the man himself, the boss, Vince McMahon. He made a surprise visit, which uh, a lot of the Raw SmackDown talent were actually told to show up there to get some training uh, to uh, work out with all the other talent there. They didn't know it, and Vince actually showed up with uh, Nick Khan, the the chief <laughs> revenue officer, the guy who'd been making so many cuts in WWE. Um, and yeah, he, he, he showed up with uh, the likes of uh, Bruce Pritchard and John Laurinaitis. That's right. Johnny Ace was there too as well. So, wow, uh, nice. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. So, yeah, a, a lot of those guys are running around on tippy toes. They didn't know if they were going to get cut. Uh, was Vince there checking out talent to bring up to the new roster? But, yeah, uh, a lot of the talent from the main roster was told to come down uh, to, to train at the, at the Performance Center with a lot of the new guys and stuff. So, apparently... Vince went away very, very happy with what he saw going on at the Performance Center. And uh, like I said, as far as coming up to the main roster, we don't know anything yet. Oh, like, like I said, he, right. he they just they, they pretty much just shadowed everybody. And, just, um, and uh, I, I guess they took note of who they like, who they didn't like, I guess, uh, who needs improvement. And, uh, and I guess in the weeks to come, we'll – see if uh any new talent uh comes up or gets uh terminated well i'll tell you i'll tell you that uh, if that's the case man a lot of that young talent down there had some really good talent to work with especially guys we mentioned earlier like mike the miz and uh aj styles my god oh i yeah and it's a good thing that vince walked away happy because and i and, that's a good the, thing I believe one and one of the main reasons that a lot of the talent was there was to work to, to get that training in because they were getting so comfortable working in front of the screens with no audience. So I guess a lot of times they 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 wanted Vincent the uh Vince wanted the talent to get there, bust their asses in training because eventually now they're gonna be performing in front of live audiences now because you know yep. with a lot of the restrictions being lifted. They're going to, you know, you got the pay-per-views and all these. Uh, I think, ain't they coming back to MSG from what I saw? To my understanding, I did not see that. Uh, Don't get me started on our trip to MSG. Oh, my God. That was a, lo that was a long ass day. Let it go. I will. Let it go. <laughs> I believe they are because I, I think they're, uh, uh, SmackDown is what's uh, coming to MSG. I think that's what I saw. To me, uh, I think Vince coming to the Performance Center was basically him uh, looking at what's next because he did get rid of the people, and that's he normally does this. He normally goes after the big cuts to go to see, okay, who can I steal? And that's basically it. He, when he saw Alistair, he, he was like, Maybe. he was like, I need him. I want him. Triple H was like, nah, not yet, son. And he was like, no, but I want him. Like, nah, not yet, son. And then when he gave it to him, what what would he do with him? It, it, it's he he went down to check out what is next for him. 
and that's what bosses would and, do. And and yeah, like, but then you know, at the same time, he's he's uh poaching. He, he's gonna try to poach from uh from uh Triple H's baby. That's what he's trying to do, you know, NXT. It, but like I said, he didn't just have NXT there. He had a lot of the main roster guys there because, like I said, they're 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 gonna be performing in front of live crowds, and he just wants to make sure everybody's on point, plain and simple. I, th- I think that, honestly, that's what it is. I think Vince went down there with all the big head honchos that do the writing and all that stuff. Yes, what Mike is saying, Vince, is he out of touch? I think so. I don't think he's really too far out of touch, but he is out of touch with a lot of stuff. Um, but I think he took everybody down there. I think the whole entire main roster was down there. I, don't, I think there's a lot of stuff that no one really knows about. I think he had one. He had a huge meeting with the entire roster, going, "Hey, here's what our shows are going to be. This is what we're going to do. Just so you know, it's it's crunch time. Step up, or you're not going to be used. It's that simple. Most I definitely. really think that's what it was. I think it was one of those tough love conversations. Of listen, we're going live with fans in less than three in less than what three weeks, four weeks. Yeah, yep. SummerSlam, I think it is right, or is it after SummerSlam? Uh, no, it's uh, Money in the cool. Bank. They're going live. Right? Yeah, yeah, Money in the Bank. My bad. So they have less than three weeks, give or take. I forget what Money in the Bank is, but and I you, believe... you need that. You need to hear. That's uh, Sunday, guy. July 18th. Actually, sooner. It's coming up Sunday, July 18th. Well, and uh, uh, Dennis, I believe this this Saturday on Burkers and Body Slams in the studio, uh, That w- that's our topic. The uh, Money in the bank prediction. Yeah, I gotta look at what's in the card. Like I know a lot of I people know. aren't happy about it so far with Selena Vega and Riddle and them. And it's like, you know what? Here's the thing. No one in the inter- internet wrestling community give they, they they just don't know how to be happy. They're they're <laughs> I'm I'm, not, I'm gonna call it as I see it. They're a bunch of idiots sometimes. Like Nothing Vince or Triple H does, or nothing that Tony Khan does, or Impact Any, or Hardaway. anybody does. You damn no if one you do, yeah. if you damned yeah. if you don't. It's like all. you're all, oh yay, Selena Vega's back. Oh, why is she in this match? Like they, they can't happy some somebody getting a paycheck. Like, like look, I'm real. ecstatic that they're going back to live fan, live shows with fans because it's been missing. Yes. yes. Did someone just blast them and tell them that they were piping in fans' crowd reactions? First off, Lana, sweetheart, I know you can wrestle, but we all know they've been piping the crap in because Roman Reigns has been getting booed. Yeah. <laughs> um, on a lot of occasions, he's been getting over more than what, we, what he's used to getting over in front of a live crowd. And I'm not saying he's not good, uh, but... You can tell it's piped in noise. Uh, I'm going to tell you this. Roman's going to be a lot more over now as a heel than as a face because he's been putting his best work in as a heel. So if we go to live crowds, don't be surprised if Roman gets cheered because acknowledge him. That gimmick is straight money. Oh, the whole I love the whole entire angle. Now it just sucks that one of the members of the group kind of just screwed themselves. Well, uh, and kind yeah. of, I don't think it's a kind of again, bad thing. I'm, like I ha- like Doyle just sent me the video that I watched it, and if that's the one that I watched, there's a lot of iffy, questionable things that just happened in that video. Um, but I will discuss them. Uh, I'll leave that until we're off the air because I'm not. I don't. I don't I'm not going to talk legal stuff. Uh, but. I kind of agree a little bit. There were some fishy things that were said and how that was handled, um, especially with someone just asking a question, if he can call a lawyer on the phone just to make sure that his rights weren't being taken advantage of, which you have all the rights in the world to get to, to be asked. You have the right to ask for that. You can't deny a lawyer on the phone, um, which in the video, the cop denies the lawyer and says, nope, now you're arrested. So there's a lot of questionable hmm. things in that video. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna watch it again because I'm gonna I knew I missed something, but yeah, like the fans are never gonna be happy. Like I said, there's a lot of people in our group chat to you as me and you've had convos that make me yeah we have some yeah we have some personal head. stuff. Like I'm gonna make a comment 
right now and right here, if no one thinks John Cena is the Hulk Hogan, the Stone Cold and the Rock of his of his era, please just stop watching wrestling because that man is 100% the Hulk Hogan, the Stone Colds, the Rocks, if, all of it in one for when he was wrestling since he started, period. If, if, if it just says uh, Randy Orton is his macho man savage, that much, if you see it, you'll know. He is a Hulk Hogan, and Randy yes. is his savage. Yes, 100%. 100%. I think John Cena literally is the Hulk Hogan of, our, of, the, of, of that era that he was in. We have it. Like they had. Like, is John Cena going to co- come back for another match? Most likely. It's yeah. You know, it, it, it's basically that's that's basically what it's billed as so far. To well, he was even the, saying it. And the tweakers is basically uh, Cena versus Reigns at SummerSlam. That's that's what everybody's building to. I hope it leads to Roman versus Raw at Mania. Gets the head of the table gimmick. With them two is pure gold. You think Look, you, you think Rock not, will lay down? We're not going to get the Rock versus Roman until it's in LA. Hmm. I, I'm just saying that gimmick, the head of the table, and with Alpha and Sika and all them, and you know, everybody if everybody falls in line and does their place with that gimmick, yes, you know how much what what you if, sell that what for. if they do a head of the table type chief match plus but but here here's the catch though roman says i want it on the isle of samoa you yeah, asking for too much dog nah i like, <laughs> I, 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 I can see them doing that i can look, see look, them doing that look, no, he's asking great. too much here's how just, i would love just to let see them it wrestle. okay it'd be okay listen listen here's how i would love to see it happen if you're going to go that route on who the head of the family is at this point, and it's going to come down to the Rock versus Roman, you have to have the entire family literally sitting at the table at the top of the ramp. Word. Or not, Period. That, yeah, that or would not be cool. Roman yeah, Jackson, exactly. Or anybody says anybody with a wheelchair, let him smack you real quick. <laughs> like, like in, my, in all honesty, the story that they're building with Roman and them is beautiful. I'm telling you, it is beautiful. money. Someone money. called it Someone called it Godfather. They're calling him the Godfather. I'm like, it's nowhere near it. No, this no, is a legit no. Samoan legacy. This is that, legit. This is not a work. This is real life. That, Roman Reigns wants that 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 acknowledgement from his family that he is they, the head of the they, table. They right gave now. him. They said, "Let you be yep. you," and he let himself be him. He's tired of the BS of the people screaming, "I'm not it." Well, guess what, son? I am it. And trust me. I'm not a big fan of Roman as a gimmick. I love Joe. Joe is fucking awesome. It could work. But Roman, I'm like, where is this going? Now I know where this is going. Yes. With Roman as the head of the table, I see clearly, as Edge would say, I see exactly where they're going with this. And instead of it being on the stage, Doyle, I like your idea. Doyle Day says, or the whole family is lumberjacks. So as, instead of lumberjacks, you have them sit around the goddamn ring like they're UFC people. Like that, they're that judges. Sounds, that sounds like... They surround the ring. That's, I mean, not just... In a cage. Like, I mean, like the whole right. No, no. Get rid of the ropes. In Do a cage? Samoan... No, no, no. <laughs> no. Do it Samoan style. You have a match, but r- no, a don't, ropeless don't do that, ring. I, ha- I, I have, like... Things on fire on the outside. Don't do that. Vince hey, would love my have, idea. You He'd gotta like, have the tiki torches. You can't do it oh, without man, the I, just, I style. was just thinking that. What we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have like uh Vince rent out like some type of lot with like fire all over and they're like wearing their reefs and everything. And, oh man, I can make money. <laughs> I'm in. I'm sold. Let's do it. I'm in. Where are we going? Like, like a tradition, like we call it the tradition, like traditional tribe match. Like everybody that's gonna swallow, yeah. like, oh shit, they right back to the sand, just hitting yeah. each other with fist. I gentlemen, since all this talk about Samoans and all, I just wanted to let all our viewers take a look at the bottom there. Uh WXW C4 will return to Allentown, PA, on Saturday, July 17th, 
The doors open up at 5 p.m. Bell time is at 6 p.m. And it will be held at the Mountainville Memorial Hall at 1814 South Fifth Street. Like I said, in Allentown, PA. For you, for you who don't know, it is owned and run by Samu Anawai, which he also runs the Allentown uh, of the uh, Wild Samoa Training Center, which the other one is in Pensacola, Florida, which is run by his father, Arthur the Wild Samoan. But for you fans out there who don't know about uh, WXWC4, I actually have some footage for you to check out, and hopefully uh, we'll be right back and we'll discuss some more uh, stuff real quick before we go off the air. But I want to show this to y'all. Well, there you have it. Uh, I'm like a magician. He disappeared again. Uh, so, <laughs> Abracadabra. Not drinking the four locos. T-Ray T is your... Abracadabra. No, he ain't didn't pop up yet. But, uh, yeah, folks, like I said, uh, you just seen the video, WXWC4. Uh, like I said, the info is down below. Uh, check him out. Damn ho. July, <laughs> July 17th, uh, Allentown, PA. Um there's some other stuff in the wrestling world that uh, we didn't get to. That's not on our list. That's not on our list. We were actually talking about Tommy and or Malachi Black's debut in AEW. E okay, yeah. before we get to that, we're going to take the card straight bottom to top because this shit was awesome. We could do this in two minutes real fast. First match, the strap match, ah. it was Cody. Versus, uh, I can't remember his damn name. See, we can't do the whole car from top to finish. Cause, <laughs> you know, no, we're just gonna touch on some some key things. We're already an hour and a half into the show. Already, already messing it up. You're fired. You're fired. Yeah, you're no. fired already. You're not. <laughs> shit. I don't know if we're gonna have you back. All right, let's jump back to Tom. The real Andy. subject. Look, yeah, so, look. Uh, I, I, I loved his debut. His debut was cool. I wish they didn't mess up the gimmicks with the light in the beginning because it would have made more impactfulness when it happened later on. But I guess whoever production was did not know not Cody in the beginning, but later on when it happens to. But I thought it was awesome. I thought he kept the kayfabe to the eye from the previous engagement that he had with WWE. So he's keeping the work, brothers. Yeah, um, I, I think I, I think I, I see the gobbler in the room, but I don't see him live on screen. But yo, did anybody see that video that yes, uh, yes, that he put out? Yes, yes. The, that was great. And they kept calling him Tommy. Tommy's like, you know, he's a little crazy. He was uh uh far as like a split personality and all that going on. Uh, my, my boy wrestled yeah, yeah, yeah. too, and he was one of the doctors and whatnot. That video was awesome. And then in that video towards the end, that's when he switched his name to Malachi. Oh man. Yep. Um yeah, like like I thought they I like me me personally, I thought they were like, I thought he was gonna keep the Al uh the Alistair name and maybe go with Alistair End or or Tommy Black or something like that. Like he's try to stick with the both, but then yet he, he's keeping the black, but uh the Malachi name, I guess it's more bib bib. It's, 
It's uh, not, biblical. Not yeah, there you go. I think he has a cat named Malachi. No, wow. Well, okay. I think he does too. Um, but no, look, <laughs> I'm ecstatic for him. I'm ecstatic for him, dude. Me and you both like the, the, the crowd erupted like. As soon as he kicked Arn, they didn't care if Arn was a face. He kicked Arn. Everybody said, yeah. <laughs> he kicked Cody <laughs> like about fucking time. <laughs> so going to this match, he's going to be the face whether he's a heel or not. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, the Look, crowd loved him. <laughs> I, as we were talking in our chat, like WWE dropped the ball huge on him. And here's why. And he's not Nobody. the only person they dropped the ball on. Uh, Keith no, no, there's just a... waiting for his name to get cleared. <laughs> look, That's all look. he's doing. The, the, the question everybody's asking is, how did this happen? How did Aleister Black get the green light to go on to another company without the 90-day clause? Because he, he they, did... WWE screwed up on his contract, and he went up from NXT to the main roster – with the same agreement, after you, when you get let go by NXT, you have 30 days. You can't wrestle anywhere. The main roster, you have 90 days. So he, WWE never looked at this contract. That's why 30, 35 days later, he was on TV. Yeah. He oh, still, he still was that that NXT sideways, and he, he already had the blessing. Like He, he had a 30-day clause. That's why we were all shocked. We were waiting for like maybe the end of summer. No, yep. he showed up like the next day. Like, hey, how you doing? Yeah, like I won't lie, I did not expect him to come out this soon. Like when I saw the video, I said to my girlfriend last night, "I'm like, now it makes sense of why that video dropped yesterday uh, or the other day on Tuesday." Where, it, it, if you notice, I think there was like three people that uh they did it with. John Moxley was the first one because when Mox's contract ended. He put out the whole prison break thing. Oh, that that was well, great. The thing was, the that. thing was, is Mox let his contract expire. He didn't get released. He just let it run out. Yeah, that's yeah, why he was able to do it. Uh, Ethan Page did something, but he waited. He yep. waited maybe two months. He did. Uh, he waited sixty days after NXT. Like uh, some guys are smart. Some guys are smarter. Like I'm not knocking Tommy. I'm not gonna knock. Al, you know but, uh, Malachi Black's decision to show up now. Tommy Ann's thing was perfect. If they didn't do the blackout in the beginning, I swear on everything, the pop would have been bigger. Look, I think the blackout screwed up because I watched it from a cam fan standpoint on a camera, and they knew it was him. The like, I'm watching it. Like, I didn't see. I didn't know it was him until. It, like until the lights came on from like the TV pers pers perspective, but when I watched it from the te from an angle from a fan from a camera phone, and they're like, "Holy shit, it's Alistair Black!" Like, how did you know? Like, how did you see that that was him? And it's apparently people were taking pictures before it happened and had flashlights on and they could see it. I think they should have did it a little different. Um the where literally he just slid up from underneath the ring and boom, he came up right steps on the ramp and Ben, there he was. Mm. Um, I, again, pulling the old school taker of way to get into the ring is hard enough to do it to get you there. Um, and he probably didn't want to lay underneath the ring for probably like three hours. But yeah, I, like, like him, I, I can see just coming through the crowd and just hopping over to Rillin and getting in. Yeah, like I won't lie, I was I was ecstatic. I was happy about it. I did not expect it. Like those are the surprises I love. I love those surprises because it catches me off guard and it makes yeah. me feel like a fan again. Like being a wrestler, Chio T, you guys can probably agree. It's hard to watch wrestling as a fan anymore because we're always watching it as a as Since a wrestler. Stay one. And yeah, yeah, I messed everything it's up. So me. hard, it is, <laughs> and it we is pick it so apart. Hard. Yes, like my girlfriend, we, she's like, we can't be fans no more. <laughs> like my girlfriend's like, I don't know if I'm supposed to watch it as a fan or if I'm supposed to watch it and study. I'm like, look, for Bro, me, I've been doing I, it for 13 years. I can't watch. I can. There's some some matches that I watch as a fan, <laughs> like the tag team match on NXT. The first one I watch it as a fan because I love. The, I, I'm a fan of all those guys. When the Miz wrestles, I watch it as a fan. I, I can turn that switch, but I can't turn the switch it, off for the entire like, show. Here, here's the thing. It's like it's like watching I'm 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 gonna put it like this. It's like uh watching the Superman movie that 
that that came out man of steel when that first came out i i did not enjoy it the first time i watched it because i was analyzing everything i was picking it apart because of the comparison between uh part one and part two with christopher reeves and this that i'm like i was analyzing i was picking this son of a bitch apart like crazy then i watched it the second time then i actually enjoyed it then i actually enjoyed it but i love Superman. that he's my favorite character it was just the way the storyline how his dad died this that from the original and you know it's just like I don't know. It's, it's just a way try, you trying to compare everything together. But now us as wrestlers right. looking at these shows and stuff like that, there's times where I catch myself where, uh, okay, you know, you're picking apart and then sometimes you can go back and watch it as a fan then, or you do yes. vice versa, whichever. Look, I, I say right now. love Man of Steel. He could kiss my fucking ass. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I don't get me wrong. I, I do, I do love the movie. It's just when a, my man it's just said, a, "You keep talking about my mama." It's just the fact I was. Just I'm saying though, I was picking it apart though because of history that you know of those characters. Yeah, but it's just so, it, like in history and wrestling, like wrestling. Yeah, we, you have to evolve. You have to come up with something fresh because not people going to get stale. And it's like, okay, where where's the new? Stuff that, that 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 new freshness that we need to breathe in to me, like uh, the acclaim, the acclaim to me is fucking awesome because I know the, yeah, ga- the, the yeah, game, I- the game play is from John Cena, right? The acclaim name was supposed to be the pinnacle's name, but they didn't go with that name, so Mass Caster and Bowen took it. And, and he copyrighted it. Did he copyright and, and, and that? They made it their own. And guess what? They're gonna be the next big thing because they keep doing the C uh motions with it. They're good. You know, they're not the greatest tag team, but their personality takes some places that other tag teams can't get to. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh with AEW this past week, it was a great solid show. Uh Miami Road Rager, it was great. Another guy like I was saying before that they, that WWE dropped the ball. That's in AD, uh, AEW. He made his in ring debut, and that was uh, Andrade. He went against uh, Mike Sadell. Uh, oh, yes, yes, great match. They went back and forth. Uh, his gimmick when he came in. Did you in, see the suit he was wearing yo, with the black mask? Yeah. Damn, that that's on some DC shit. You guys, you got yeah, page. yeah, that's what DC I thought of right away. Book. Look, it's I didn't also, watch the whole event. It's so. part of the Ingobernables too, so it, it's on the same pedestal, you know. But it was some slick shit. Like he came out dressed like a million bucks. I just he doesn't need Vicky in them. No, his his name alone rings bells. His work is fucking solid. Like he doesn't need them. Yeah, you well, know I, that's the part don't need, I don't get. He don't need a uh, Vicky, one of the uh, Mount Rushmore managers of champions. It was a joke. God damn you! <laughs> <laughs> Freaking I'm still hate you so bad. bad. No, yo, what oh, you said? Dear God. <laughs> Dennis, listen, listen. Yeah, I'll tell you I after the to, show. Yo, yeah, this has to be off the air. Are, no, no, no. I just want to make sure I heard I'm Mount t- Rushmore correct. I'll tell you after <laughs> this show. It involves him. Look, T, T, <laughs> listen. This is an after the show thing. It was a rib like weeks ago, and they still rem- they're still busting my chops for it. Yeah, we still bust his chops about. Oh, it. so you think she's about? Mount- <laughs> <laughs> Dear God, oh, here we go. All, all uh, three. Uh, 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 I got uh, four. Uh, I got four real quick, real right quick. Now. I got you. I got you. Real quick. That face, Bobby Heaton. No. Oh, we already had him. We already have him. You know, long. We 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 said him. We, we we did talk about <laughs> no, all of them. No, look. I had my four, but as a rip of them, I was like, oh, Vicky Guerrero, as a complete joke. Like, she was a great manager. I think she was phenomenal. GM, she's a great GM. She's not a Matt Rushmore for me, but I I was joking with them. And then, I mean, these guys just went off the rail on me. And I I was like, you you just saw me with like three split second i looked at dave i'm like is he for real (laughs) i see i see uh i see doyle in the room commenting that uh you definitely want to hear this that's gonna change the business okay i kind of want to know i'm intrigued with that statement 
Um, but no. So real quick with the out the whole Malachi Black because I'm going to use his real name now. Uh, that's the name. What, what if the <laughs> WWE draft was real and they really drafted indie guys like the NFL, NBA? That would be awesome. If they did that, be pretty badass. I won't oh lie. man. Well, they did draft like a couple people from uh college Olympics and U.S. Olympics. It will. No, 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 no. What he's saying will, is like it if they do it when the they wrestling... do their, when they do the it... draft on TV and they do oh. it that way. Oh, it will. I'm I'm been dying for one. It will flip the, the wrestling world on its head. Oh my it, god! Like, yeah. like, like like you up there, the number twenty third pick. Kill Frost. Fucking sitting at home. <laughs> that would just really mess with people's head. What am I booked yeah, as? Ring I, crew? I, I, uh, and my book no, as a sound no. guy. Book no, to SmackDown, Kill Frost. Everybody like, what the hell? Be, uh, and, and, and he had his old 2013 pose with his half painted face. And you're like, yeah. who is this guy with the t shirt no. shredded? Chio Frost would be drafted to work at the headquarters as a receptionist. Like, hi, welcome to WWE headquarters. How can I help Fuck you? Yeah, today? I'll do it. At least I say I work with the company. I'll be the fucking janitor. I'll be the best. I would take that job. I'll be the best no. fucking janitor. Shit. The whole AEW thing. So there's two matches that I'm excited for. One, I don't know if it'll happen, but one match I would really be excited for is Aleister Black versus Andrade. Oh, yeah. That would be Great. The other match yes. that I can't wait to see that I know will happen, not at AEW, I don't know if AEW or anywhere, but Buddy Murphy. He I is a beast. I love him. No, no, no. no, no. Did beast. you see what he posted on Twitter? No, no. He posted uh, him, him and Alistair have hold words. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Yeah. So B. Murphy goes at Tommy N. Congrats, but don't forget about me. How's the eye? And he posts. The video, a screenshot of him pushing his eye into a thing, and then the new and the new look with the eye. I'm begging, please book this match, somebody. Oh, that'd be so please great. book it. Just no restraints. Like you almost have, have to. Oh, my Lord. Like, do you understand how good their match was but, when they worked you know each what? other on WWE? But, but you their know angles the downfall, were cool. but, you, but you know what the downfall is? What it's another I, WWE guy working on there. Exactly. That's that. That's exactly my point. Uh, AEW was supposed to be the difference maker. Uh, the the new guys on the block to make a difference. And when you start seeing more and more <coughs> WWE guys jumping over, it starts to remind you of WCW all over again. And they were saying right. originally they wasn't going to go that route. They wasn't going to be like WCW. But and it, but it's slowly you start seeing it and it's happening and i and like i hope they fix it uh, okay here here's my kick of what you just said food <clears throat> on the table money on the table families you have another options beside wwe you know that nobody's going to pay you as much as wwe besides new japan but we're but the thing is we're not talking about the talent uh, uh, but to no, decide no, where but, to go, uh, we're talking uh, about AEW in general. I, I, I understand what you mean, I really do. But listen to me. Let's say if I'm coming from WWE and my time is up, why do you want to keep hanging on to what's left? I got another means to feed my family but on a nationwide television at show. the same time. AEW and they told you they don't care to, about they're supposed they to be don't care about promotions stars. like that. They are Jungle Boy. <laughs> But those spots, Jungle the Boy thing is, has the spot, wins, when they John keep Moxley, bringing in, when they Jungle keep bringing Boy. in WWE guys, they're taking spots from other guys that are fresh oh, in the business who, who can who can come St up. Staying bro, bro. And putting I'm gonna, I'm gonna this. Hold on, hold on. Let me just. I I I I got I got a response <clears throat> for both of y'all. Here's the problem, okay, with what AEW just did. They hired all these all these guys that no one ever had an opportunity to see, right? <clears throat> how big how big's their roster now and how how many of them are not being used exactly and and, and, and that's not a, enough. And they get it's used all the time they ha they have they have a youtube show they put their undercard people on yeah now with, they are with, they work, with, though. with indie people to job to give the indie people promotion you know but, but no, no, they, no, no. i'm saying i'm not saying guys on the indies i'm saying the guys they hired uh, that's what I'm trying to tell them, you, sir. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Used. 
I, I'm telling you, they hiring people from the Indies put your worker workers over on the dark show, right? And your superstars get put over by the dark show people. It's it's like Sunday people. Night Heat. I see what he's saying. You know, but, it, at but the- it, no, but you, you're not understanding. WWE give dark matches, right? Dark matches that nobody sees. AEW is putting you on the map. It's on YouTube. It's easier to do that nowadays with technology. Okay, though. but w- w- why are you shitbagging what they're doing? It, it, I'm I'm trying to figure this out. I'm not shitbagging about them doing their 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 dark YouTube show. What I'm saying is, instead of bringing and wasting the money bringing in. These guys, they can focus on the talent that they already got. They do on the show. But there's, but are, there, do you watch the product? But there's so many that's still not being used. And then who? Tell Dennis me. Comes out. I, I, I'm ready to go. Tell me who, who's not being used. Dennis, help me out here. Hold on. Let me go on the roster yeah, right, now. right now. I'm looking at the. Ro- I'm going to the roster. And I can tell you guys that I have not seen on the television or their other YouTube events. Yeah, because I ain't got nothing in front of me. I can't just go <laughs> off anything right now. Because this is a subject we didn't even thought about touching on right now. No, uh, it was going to be quick one, two, three, but you know, you're like, nobody's using this. Like, dog, everybody's but, being used. Okay. Like, whether, I see the product. Thing is, whether they're being used or not, the fact of the matter is, they shouldn't have to keep bringing in WWE guys. That's that. That's the argument I'm making. I'm going to say negative on that because if I lose my job, <laughs> I want another job, you know? You're, no, I, you're not even getting paid. Look, I you're agree. Fired. No, <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if, I, if I lose my job, I, I, I'm like, <sighs> you know what I would have done? If I was Tony, I would have done. And I know they're close to that 90 day range. Cassie, aka Peyton Royce, Billy Kay. Mm hmm. And Ruby, I can, I can, and see, Ruby, I can see them wanting to take them. And Ruby, well. and Ruby. Well, Ruby ain't Hold she? On. Wait, wait, ain't her, wait a minute. Ain't hers already done? No, they, they got they got let go. Right. Take them three ladies. If they would have done it, I'm not sure how the contract were to go. I'm not sure. But if their contract was clean and they could have done it, I would have done it yesterday on the NWO anniversary. I had them three ladies take out the whole women's division screaming, I'm putting you on notice because you guys aren't on our level. You know what I mean? Like, because their women's division lacks, and they do. They have five awesome <coughs> talents that, 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 that are Main Street. Listen to me. Five awesome talents on Main Street. I, they got a bunch of ladies. I don't that, uh, care for Billy Kay. You know? But listen to what I'm saying. If you would have brought them in like NWO on the other ladies, you would have made money, especially on NWA Day. Uh, excuse me, NWO Day. Mm. Not have gentlemen, but have ladies screaming, we're running this now. I I, no, I can see Ruby Riot doing it. I can that's why I, I gave you three but people. Like I said, I couldn't see Billy Kay. And that's the only person you can't see. Because you know, Peyton, I'm like, and I'm, Peyton, 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 I'm, I'm leery about because man. she's a pretty girl though too. You know, I don't, I, I'm I don't know. About, listen, WWE trust them on the mic; they could do it. They, they, they were put on that pedestal to be cutesy. Imagine them giving the, the pedestal to just be Johnny Badass. You know. Well, but uh, you have it here, folks. <laughs> T. Reyes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but. Gentlemen, it's getting kind of late here. We're going to get ready to close this show out. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Just a reminder, Legends of Hamburg Fan Fest is coming up July 24th. uh, And Outbreak Wrestling on the same day at the Hamburg Fieldhouse. Uh, The Fan Fest starts at 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And Outbreak, the doors will open up at 5 p.m. And bell time is at 6 p.m. And one other thing about uh, the tickets. The tickets, I, be, I believe the uh, the platinum tickets are all sold out. But uh, tickets for the, fan, for the Fan Fest are only $15. For, and for general admission, for Outbreak is only $15. But here's the catch. You can get the combo still. If you go online to OutbreakWrestling.com. 
or you go to legendsofhamburg.com, you can get the combo package of the, the Legends of Hamburg Fan Fest and Outbreak Wrestling for only $20. So you save $10, people. And uh, there's a whole host of guys that are going to be there. You're going to see a lot of the Samoan Dynasty, uh, Cowboy Bob Orton, Brooklyn Brawler, Joe Gertner, Todd Gordon, The Godfather, Two Cold Scorpio, uh, a lot of people from wow. ECW, uh, Kimono Wanalea, Jim Malino, uh, Bill Alfonso. Uh, you know what? You're going to see legends like Rock and Robin, Marty Jannetty, Tony Gria, Dominic Danucci. And the list goes on and on, and they keep adding more and more. I don't want to have an updated list, but there's so I... many people that are going to be there. Dennis is going to be there with the ROH World no, Television. No, no, no. Time out? I got I to time Uh-oh. you out there. Uh-oh. Unfortunately, Mr. Tony Deppin pulled out of my event, uh, my ah. table. Damn. And it wasn't for ROH obligations. Apparently, I'm not trying to take shots, but I'm going to say it. Um, apparently, I wasn't paying enough. Um, but AC, a, down there in AC, he has an opportunity to wrestle in front of more people. And I got to give him that. I'm not going to knock him for it. You go where the money is in this business. But I got a replacement. Okay. I have. You keep it secret or are you going to tell us? No, oh, God, no. Oh, no. We've already released it. He's one of the original members of Evolution. Oh, that was kicked out of evolution before it fully got mainstreamed. So without further ado, I oh, have shit. a former WCW, a uh, former WWE. I am bringing in Mark Jindrake. Jindrak? Jindrak, Jim Drake. Yeah, you brought him in. don't even know his fucking name. <laughs> I, I, I AKA drink. Marco Corleone, <laughs> a.k.a. one of the best yeah. drop kicks in the business. Absolutely. Uh, Listen, and I can't thank enough to the guys at uh, Legends of Hamburg, Antonio, um, and Dave Keener and them at 2300 because they've been in my inbox like crazy trying to help me find someone as a replacement on short notice. And when I tell you, I've, I've shot out emails to Sunny Kiss. I've shot emails out to Nyla Rose. I've literally been hitting, sending out emails to everybody. Um, I even try to reach out to Tony Chimmel. Mm. And Tony Chimmel is local. When I say local, he lives in Pennsylvania. He lives in within an hour of the show, of the venue. But turns out he's still under contract to WWE. So unfortunately, legally, he can't be there. Gotcha. But the fact that I have this opportunity to bring in someone that started an evolution. And then was I, I, the story. I'm gonna, I can't wait to talk to him about. It. I really want to talk to him about how this whole evolution thing went down, because it's okay. fascinating. Um, but I'm still gonna try to bring in like Sunny Kiss and somebody else, um, just to get him someone else to sit with and hang out with. But yeah, so Tony Deppin will not be at the Legends of Hamburg on July 24th. Unfortunately, I'm sorry if people were looking forward to seeing him. I was excited to bring him in because one, he's a local guy. Yeah. Um, literally from the area, so it was nice to like give someone the opportunity that's from there to go and look, look what I've done with myself. And, and anybody that follows him knows he's done a lot of ba- basic things. Me. But you could have booked me. Oh, I booked myself. But on top of that, on top I'm, of that, I'm busy doing production. So, <laughs> but on top of that, even bigger. So on top of me selling my 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 photos there for twenty dollars shot, half of the money that I raised for my photos are going to charity. Um, for the childhood cancer great cycle challenge that I'm going to be taking part in in September for the oh, whole month of September. Right. That's right. So I'm proud of that. yeah, every dime, half of the half, whatever I make on my photos, my photos are twenty bucks, so ten dollars of every photo is going to go strictly to that. And I will physically tell you to go to the website and put ten dollars towards the website. So you're only going to have to hand me ten dollars. The other half is going to I want you to pay right on the website. You get a receipt. So it's a, you know, a lot of people like to know it's a tax write off for yourself. Um, so the more money that we can raise, the better. I'm going to have all um, autograph memorabilia there that I'm going to be selling that I will have certific- um, authenticated on site by PSA as well. And I'm going to be raffling them off. And half of the proceeds will be going to that. My goal is $2,500 to raise by se- the end of September. I plan on smashing the goddamn goal on July 24th. That's, That's just, a, I'm just saying, I plan on beat having $2,500 raised 
that day. We got a live mic, fans. brother. We got a live mic. We're going to promote it. So let's, it. let's, let's get the money it. raised for childhood cancer um, because one of the students at ACPW, um, his cousin just passed away from her battle of cancer. So she is one of the people I'm going to be running this bike race for. On top of it, I'm trying to bring in a little kid that is a wrestling fan um, from the Hershey area that is um, the age of six. I, believe, I think he's five or six. I'll do the um, job. That <laughs> is going for a second round of chemo. Um, and I heard he's a big fan of wrestling. So I've been talking to Ryan Vox and them and Legends to bring him in as our guest to the show. And hell, I'll job out I'll and even... put Teal's title on the line. I will literally let him sit at the table and have him sign autographs for fans because that is a champion, without a doubt. Yes, so, yes, yes. And uh, speaking of uh, of of uh, uh, charity, we are uh, actually coming up uh, August first uh, is Basket Brawl twenty twenty one Hills versus Faces. Game time is 2 p.m. And it is to benefit the Miracle League of Mercer County. Uh, Sunday, August 1st at the YMCA, 185 Sawmill Road in Trenton, New Jersey. That's right. Hills versus Faces. And uh, if you want tickets for that, uh, simply uh, you can go into Eventbrite and... Uh, Purchase your tickets by, you know, you just t- type in the search, Basket Brawl 2021. Or if you can't make it and you want to donate, uh, they do have a GoFundMe uh, account set up where uh, the same thing as well. You go in there, keyword is Basket Brawl 2021. And like I said, that's for the for the Miracle League of Mercer County. And like I said, what better way you can see live pro wrestlers Go at it in a basketball game, and like just the roster of guys that's gonna be there is like ridiculous. Uh, it I'm like I, I know they keep adding more more guys as well. Uh, you you can look for them up on, on Facebook as as well. Look up basketball 2021 Hills Hills versus Faces. And they have a lot more details of who's going to be there. Uh, I believe you can be a sponsor. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to have t-shirts for sale or not. There's going to be the 2300 Wrestling Podcast there. They're going to be trying to do a live show from there. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be running sound and stuff like that. So, but yeah, check them out. We got all this great stuff going on. Charities, fan fest, uh, and and a whole host of things. Uh, but like I said, it we're at our two hour mark. Yeah, and, I gotta roll uh, out, guys. Yeah, it's about that time so. to roll up out of here. And gentlemen, I like to I want to thank T Reyes for uh coming on the show with us being a guest. I hope he comes back and make this be be uh, uh, a, a regular thing with us. Just charge uh, him double you? next time. Oh, definitely. No, definitely. <laughs> I'm not coming unless they have Hillshire hot dogs or some type of Nathan's product because I'm not used to this catering. Oh, man. <laughs> Shit. Chio caters? Yeah, he does for me. He does. Don't, don't. Shit, don't I work for Chio caters. That's all I got was fucking pretzel. But yeah. He but, asked me to come up know, here. He's like, you coming on my podcast? I'm like. As much oh, as I would, I want to, I want to chat with you guys after the show goes off the air. I have, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I something know. coming we up. Go, we I go. Uh, and, for, and to be honest, I would like to thank everybody that brought me on this show. Um, I really didn't expect to be here. So, uh, Dennis, Pat, Gio, I thank I, you very I, much. I think, uh, I, think, I think Pat's still in the room. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna I, try to bring I, him in real. I'm gonna bring him in but, real quick, or it's just a. Picture. I'm gonna. I, I'm leaving the studio, y'all. It was nice. Right, we'll I'll talk see you guys. I'm about I'll to talk to you all Saturday. Anyway. Uh, one love, night, brother. One I love. Guess, I guess see you Saturday. Saturday. I don't see anything. I see he's in the room, but he's not there. All right, I'll just remove him. But anyway, Pat, if you're watching this, I hope you remember T. Ray is and me whooping your ass at Blackboard Wrestling Organization. And uh, it, it was some uh, fun times. But uh, you know what? Uh, it's time to end the show. And uh, and and we left off uh, talking about 
talking about basketball and the big fan fest with Outbreak. And so you fans, if you don't know what Outbreak is and you haven't uh, been to one of the shows, uh, Mike, thank thank you again for uh, c coming and joining us. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for having me. And to the fans that listened and heard the podcast, we uh, thank you and value you very much. Uh, hopefully, we'll be back next time to give you more idioticies and wrestling terminologies. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know. Uh, probably I, Andre the Guinea's probably watching, but like I said, <laughs> we're we're out of here, and I'm gonna leave you leave you on this note. But you guys can check out some outbreak wrestling video. One love, peace.